this information quick. Uh, so you guys probably know Eric Prince was the founder of Blackwater. Uh, he, his sister, uh, Betty or Betsy DeVos, is Donald Trump's secretary of education, which I think is kind of funny because she knows nothing. She has no history whatsoever in education. Nothing. She was just a big campaign donor. And so that was her qualification to become the, the Secretary of Education. But anyway, DeVos, DeVos's uh, brother, Eric Prince, is the guy who founded Blackwater. And, and Blackwater has rebranded itself a number of times. They, they called them, they, you know, had such, Jeremy Scahill did, uh, wrote some good books. Here's one of them, Blackwater. If you're interested in, in, uh, the Rise of the World's Most Powerful Mercenary Army. Excellent book. Great, great investigative journalism. I mean, good data. Not a real thrilling read. It's not like a novel that you read and you're like, it's not a page turner. But if you want to understand how military contractors work and the dirty, dirty work that they do, uh, er, uh, Jeremy Scahill wrote, wrote a great book. But anyway, they rebranded themselves. They called themselves Z. XI. Uh, I think that right now there uh, is their current name Academy. I don't know if that's still their name or not. They're actually based. Uh, Blackwater is based here in North Carolina where I'm at uh, further out on the coast. They're not over here. They're actually up in um, the if you can picture North Carolina, they're up in the north, uh, uh, no, the northeastern corner up in kind of the swampy area of the state south of Norfolk, Virginia, which is where they could go because of the, the naval uh, bases uh, up there. They could go up there and, and recruit and so forth. But anyway, Blackwater. Uh, so Eric Prince was proposing this, this way to get, uh, he, he knew how to sell Donald Trump uh, because Donald Trump, it's always about dollars and, and, um, what you get out of it. So what Eric Prince said is, look, clearly we need to stay in Afghanistan, but you need a cheaper way of doing it. So here's what I propose. And he proposed a, you know, for $5 billion have, you know, if Donald Trump would essentially sign off on $5 billion, what Eric Prince could help to do is establish a basically privatize Afghanistan. You could bring the, bring the U.S. troops home, put in military contractors, which is the polite term for mercenaries, and uh, run it that way. Now, the truth is they already have a sizable, there are far more mercenaries involved in Afghanistan and have been going back for many years now uh, that then you have actual uh, soldiers. You know, you, you don't want your U.S. soldiers out there guarding the poppy fields for the CIA. <laughs> if you can get by with, you know, you, you don't want to use the U.S. military to get out there and go gun down rival uh, drug lords in Afghanistan that are competing for poppy field territory. You need somebody that can go in and, and burn down the poppy fields of certain tribal leaders who are not giving the CIA their fair cut of the opium trade. And so that's really Afghanistan. I mean, that that's a big part of Afghanistan. CIA is, is making hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars uh, from the, uh, the opium trade. But anyway, uh, for, to fund black projects and things like that. So what Eric Prince said is, is look, yes, it's going to be, uh, you can, you get paid a whole lot more as a contractor than as a soldier. But in the long run, because a mercenary doesn't have to, you don't have to pay veterans benefits to, to a mercenary. You don't have to have the medical care for the mercenaries. What he was saying is that even though the, the individual contractors will make a lot more money, you pay them a lot more in the long run, you won't have to take care of them for the rest of their lives. So in the long run, you save money. And that's what he, that was the, the, the plan. And by the way, I will tell you, I've spoken with a number of people who have uh, served in Afghanistan, served, and maybe some of you, if any of you out there have uh, know anyone or have yourself, 
uh, sound off in the in the chat there. But I've spoken with people who went to Afghanistan, served a couple of tours, came back. They're struggling to feed their you know their family on, on a soldier's salary, making almost nothing out there risking their life and they get approached saying hey if you want to go back as a contractor for blackwater or whatever you'll get paid five times as much money to do the exact same thing and there's some other perks too and and, and so and so that's the attraction that's the drive so donald trump was strongly uh considering going with eric prince's plan but mattis and some of the other old timers talked him out of it but i strongly suspect that now with mattis out of the way here is my prediction watch for it i predict that donald trump is going to in the next three months or so begin to withdraw troops from afghanistan now if you pay attention only to the headlines if you're a nationalist like me if you're you know anti-interventionist this is going to sound great and it is bring our troops home but if donald trump turns around and privatizes afghanistan for the benefit of the military industrial complex that is going to be running guns and all kinds of stuff in here at least with the u.s military you have some oversight you hand this over to mercenaries they can slaughter without uh without repercussion they don't have the same standards that uh, professional soldiers have to have, uh, government soldiers. So I want to get them all out. So that's that's what I'm saying. Because honestly, if you're a if you're a guy living in Afghanistan, you're just a farmer, living your life in your little village, and in come some uh, some guys that you know are Americans, and they gun down your family. Do you really care if it's a U.S. Army soldier or a U.S. uh, private contractor? Does it really matter in the end? Your your child's dead either way. So they're going to hate us regardless. So I say if Trump does begin to pull uh, troops out of Afghanistan, that's great. Let's cheer that on. But at the same time, keep your eyes wide open follow the money, follow what plans are being put in place in the stead of using regular soldiers. And if there is evidence that Trump is privatizing for the military industrial complex, privatizing the Afghanistan war, then please have the integrity to call the man out on it. Don't kiss up to him. You know, be like, oh, that's great that you're pulling the soldiers out. Now I'm going to pretend like I, like it doesn't matter that the war is still going to go on just through other means. Let's let's be consistent. founder of private security contractor Blackwater represented Trump at a secret meeting overseas this January, according to NBC News. Citing two unnamed intelligence sources, NBC News reports that the meeting was convened by the United Arab Emirates. The meeting reportedly took place on January 11th in the Seychelles Islands in the Indian Ocean. Blackwater founder Eric Prince reportedly met with an unnamed Russian emissary close to Vladimir Putin. That account was first reported by the Washington Post. No members from Trump's transition team took direct part in the meeting, and it's unclear who initiated the meeting according to NBC News. One source told NBC the meeting was about the Middle East, not Russia. The bottom line, the founder of Blackwater represented Trump at a secret meeting, sources tell NBC. One of the most despicable aspects of today's military-industrial complex is the outsourcing of armed forces, something the establishment quickly learned in the wake of the backlash of the Vietnam War. Nowadays, going to war doesn't even mean sending American military personnel, as long as you can contract killers for hire with zero allegiance to any country or constitution. That's exactly what we've seen proliferate under the war on terror. Contractors from KBR to Dyncorp are shipped to war zones and usually kept there long after the last U.S. troops. 
as evident by Iraq and Afghanistan today. But there's no other contractor firm more insanely corrupt and criminal than Blackwater. Oh, sorry, did I say Blackwater? I meant Z. Uh, Academy, actually. Yes, in a poor effort to distance itself from its sordid war crimes and black market deals, Blackwater has changed its name three times already. See, during the Iraqi occupation, Blackwater made headlines for its rampant unaccountability and murder sprees. Whether it was guards indiscriminately firing on passing cars, animals, or human beings. You may remember during the height of the occupation in 2007, Blackwater guards straight up slaughtered 17 civilians in Nasser Square in Baghdad. The incident caused justifiable uproar on behalf of Iraqis, with its prime minister calling it, quote, deliberate murder and feigned outrage on behalf of the U.S. government, which passed a bill subjecting contractors to U.S. courts because for some reason they weren't before. After years of legal red tape and government mishaps over what had been coined the My Lai moment of Iraq, three contractors are currently in the midst of a trial over manslaughter charges. However, as New York Times journalist James Risen just broke, weeks before the Nassau tragedy, the State Department had already begun investigating the company's operations in Iraq. But according to Risen, the inquiry was abandoned after Blackwater's top manager there issued a threat that he could kill the government's chief investigator, and no one could or would do anything about it, as we were in Iraq, according to department reports. Yes, you heard that right. Blackwater's top commander in Iraq said that he would simply kill anyone investigating this company. So after threatening the life of officials of the State Department, clearly this guy was promptly fired and put in jail, right? Not exactly. In fact, American embassy officials in Baghdad sided with Blackwater rather than the State Department as the review intensified. According to Ryzen, the officials told investigators that they had disrupted the embassy's relationship with the security contractor and ordered them to leave the country. No, Blackwater wasn't ordered to leave. The investigators were. Well, understandably, upon returning to Washington, the investigator named Gene Richter harshly rebuked Blackwater's conduct, claiming that they acted as if they were above the law. And I quote, the management structures in place to manage and monitor our contracts in Iraq have become subservient to the contractors themselves. Indeed, this reckless arrogance came to define Blackwater's presence in Iraq and relationship with the U.S. government. But at least after this overt threat, Blackwater had its contracts cut, right? Nope. Less than a year after the Nasser Square massacre, the State Department renewed Blackwater's contract to protect diplomats in Iraq for another year. And in fact, since 2007, the U.S. has handed this criminal enterprise at least $242 million in contracts, including $100 million from the CIA under Obama in 2010, and another with the DOD in May of this year. Now, if the unchecked hubris of this murder-for-hire force disgusts you, you might be even more shocked to learn that this wasn't the first time that Blackwater threatened the lives of people trying to undermine it. In fact, Jeremy Scahill, author of Blackwater, The Rise of the World's Most Powerful Mercenary Army, Blackwater founder Eric Prince might have actually ordered the execution of people in the past. According to two sworn affidavits by former Blackwater employees, the company not only regularly smuggled weapons into Iraq and destroyed evidence that could implicate itself, but in a sworn declaration, John Doe No. 2 alleges that it appears Mr. Prince and his employees murdered or had murdered one or more persons who have provided information or were planning to provide information to the federal authorities about the ongoing criminal conduct. Doe No. 2 also alleges that, quote, on several occasions after my departure from Mr. Prince's employee, Mr. Prince's management has personally threatened me with death and violence. Gee, sounds just like the kind of company that you would want to be showering with hundreds of millions of dollars in contracts, doesn't it? But see, it makes more sense when you realize the disturbing plane of reality that Eric Prince finds himself living on. According to these employees, Prince considered himself a Christian crusader akin to the Knights of Templar, who truly believed that he was personally tasked by God to eliminate Muslims and the Islamic faith from the globe. But if you listen to Prince, he's just the biggest victim of all. This is what we had to say in this online-only clip from The Daily Show. So you feel that the government actually actively turned against you 
and began to to persecute you in some way. Indeed, and and, and you know, meeting with congressional staffs, meeting right. with these investigators, they said, look, it doesn't matter what you guys are going to do, we're going to ride you until you're out of business. Maybe what he meant by out of business is total legal immunity, safe harbor in Abu Dhabi, hundreds of millions more in contracts, and no justice for countless dead Iraqis.